Brad Delos' road to the World Championships in Norway started out slow with the Steel Tim Sports Australian Championships. In the spring ward, he finished second to Braden Meyer and sixth overall. didn't see it coming. Just after the first couple of events I was really down and I just had to lift myself and build and build. Yeah, I'm pretty emotional really that everything's come together like it has. It's, yeah, it's really amazing. Winning the Australian Championship qualified Brad Delosa for the World Individual Championship, but this will not be his first attempt at the crown. and later in 2013 where Delosa broke through, winning his first Steel Timber Sports individual world title. It's a lucky day today and I uh, come out on top and it's um, awesome. Again, after winning the Australian Championship last year, Has he become a good Delosa qualified over Braden Meyer to represent Australia in Stuttgart, Germany. Brad Delosa gets this one. After good heat wins in the soaring discipline, Delosa is through quicker with a 13-15 and the springboard. The Lotus fortune turned for the worst. The hot saw being the hurdle in an average size. Good start by DeLosa. Oh, big mistake. And he goes twice. Last year in the individual, you know, that's hit him hard. And uh, he wants to show that he's still got it. Yeah, I was disappointed last year with the performance. I think it was just due to, yeah, probably lack of rest. And there was a combination of a few things there that probably, you know, played into the way I was. Unfortunately, we have a disqualification. But since then, Delosa has put together a string of victories. He was a vital member in the winning track team at the team World Championship. That's it for Australia. All these small sports. And it's a new world record. The Australians are the new world champions in the team competition. Six months later, the Champions Trophy in Hamburg, Germany, Delosa also had success. Brad Delosa's got the power and he tends to get better as he moves along, moving over to that single... When he was in Hamburg, a few people thought he was going to come fourth or fifth. And he proved them that he's still the best in the world. Yeah, Delosa with the advantage here. Sterling Hart is behind. Delosa is now on standing block. Hart catches up. This is where Sterling Hart is a very strong competitor. Let's see if he can do the same thing he did to Jason Wingard again. Brad Delosa, Delosa, this under the other side. Champions Trophy title established Brad Delosa as one of the most successful still Timber Sports athletes in the world. Delosa's top is loose and Delosa gets it. It has given him the confidence and momentum to do well as a world championships here in Norway. You know, this is the one they want to win. This is it. You know, six still Timber Sports disciplines. They want to be named the best still Timber Sports athlete, and this is the one he wants. I always go in with very high expectations, you know. I have won it before and I think after you win it, you're not really satisfied with anything but that. So I'll be going in with very high expectations and um, yeah, I'd certainly love to win it and take the title home again for sure. But Brad, you know, he's, he's such a professional sportsman. You know, everything he does, he, he thinks down to that minute detail. And so this year we've brought a couple of extra support crew for him just to take his mind away from having to worry about his equipment and just focus really on getting himself in the right mental space to win the World Championships. I think 
at this stage, I pretty much know what I've got to do. Australian Championships were only three weeks ago, so it's not as if you've got to you know, start from scratch. Everything's going pretty well, so I've just been chugging a few blocks and soaring a little bit. I'll be really going out to try and grab a top position in the underhand and try to build from that. You can get a great start to the day, you sort of build some momentum and go from there. So the first round, the underhand standing block and stock saw are were single points, and then you go into double points for the springboard and the single buck. So that will be another crucial point. You're gonna have to perform well right across the board, and then it will come down to the hot saw. There'll probably be three or four guys, I would say, in contention to win it in the hot saw, and it's certainly gonna have to perform well there and cut a time somewhere in the mid to high five second range, I think, to, to win the hot saw. You've got to focus wholly and solely on every event, just what you've got to do, not worry about anything else or how anybody else is going. You've just got to concentrate on one event at a time and really focus on that event and perform as best as you can. You know, whatever happens around you is certainly out of your control, so that's all you can worry about and focus on. I think Brad's head's in a good space. You know, last year he, he says, you know, he was a bit flat, he was lethargic. This year he's looking a lot better, you know, he's relaxed. He's probably chopped about a quarter of the amount of blocks he normally does. You know, he's not worrying about having to go out there and really kind of put in some extra yards. He's done all the work back home, you know, his chopping's improved this year. That's one of the reasons why he won the Australian Championship. looking fit, he's feeling confident, and uh, I'm sure he's going to do the country proud. The action moves to Lillehammer, and DeLosa takes on rival Martin Connery on the underhand. Meanwhile, Brad DeLosa, he's got great flow moving over to the other side. Can he get to the start he's after? get started with their first event, the underhand shot. The underhand shot resembles the old school technique of cutting felled trees down to size. After removing approximately 50% of the front side, they pirouette to the back, devastating their block with power and precision, eventually driving the wheels through. All right, Mitchell Hewitt and Robert Ebner coming out on the stage. Final preparations to get themselves ready for their underhand shot battle. Contestants ready. So getting off to a good start is what he wants. Underhand is a very important event. It's the first event, so it's probably the most important to get out on a good note.
it goes to Martin Komarek, though. Well, I wonder if Brad Delos has been taking any notes from some of the younger guys on his team because uh, there are a couple of guys there that can really move that axe head when it comes to the underhand chop. And if he has been, boy, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. And probably he's got something to prove after last night's elimination from uh, taking another championship. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. Brad just finished his heat up against Martin. A good start for him. Just got to make sure in the stock story he finishes in the top one or two, and it's a good start for the night. And of course, we have the legend in the house, Jason Winyard. Well, Jason Winyard may be in tough against Matt Kogar. He obviously says himself that underhand is not his discipline. I think that is definitely reserved for the single buck, but that's not leaving Jason Winyard any kind of downgrading on this one here. And Matt Koger over on stand B is actually the current U.S. record holder as of this summer. So uh, we're, I think we're about to see something special here. Yeah, I think so. The mantle has been passed from Arden Kogar to Matt Kogar now taking on duties here on stage. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. position in the underhand with a fast 16.14 time. Brad DeLosa finishes fourth behind Winyard and Comerick as they head into the stock saw. The still stock saw is the first of our soaring events. Placing both hands on the trunk of the 40 centimetre block, athletes must reach for their chainsaws on the sound of the gun and cut two perfect cookies within the allocated 10 centimetres of wood and the face is ready to be cured. Martin Komarek over there on stand B, a former world record holder in this event. Pierre Poubere of France over on stand A, a very, very technically sound stock sower. Look for both of these men to put up. Cuts probably in the top half of our, uh, our leaderboard. Hands on the wood, get set. <laughs> On the other side, an 11.47, Pierre Puy-Barré with a 12.11. All right, we've got coming up on stand A, New Zealand's Jason Winyard, currently in second place overall, taking on Poland's Arcadius, coming off a high last night of placing in that silver medal in the team's event. Both these men looking to improve upon their already great positions. Jason Winyard's also known for being so focused on, on training in each and every one of these disciplines as well, which is why he is so strong and an eight-time world champion. Hands on the wood. Get set. <laughs> Go one better in the stock store. Right, it looks like 
like a good start by Delosa. Steel Timber Sports brought to you by the Amarok V6, the most powerful ute in its class. 11 Workwear, official clothing partner of the Steel Timber Sports Australian Series. And still voted number one for quality garden power tools. Better still. Steel Timber Sports brought to you by the Amarok V6, the most powerful ute in its class. 11 Workwear, official clothing partner of the Steel Timber Sports Australian Series. And still voted number one for quality garden power tools. Better still. We are in Lillehammer, Norway for the Steel Timber Sports World Individual Championships. Currently in fourth position after the first event, Australian Brad Delosa will need to stay in contention with a solid stock saw run. Stock saw is a critical event because there's so many guys that are so close with the stock saw, it can probably nearly win or lose you the championship. Contestants ready. 15 seconds to warm up your swords. Hands on the wood. Get set. It's a personal best for Mitch Hewitt with a 10.43. Delosa gets an 11.20. So, Sterling, let's look at this really quickly. You see, great start by both of these guys. You always said that thin to win. Well, these guys are running equally matched saws, so everything comes down to the operators. Cutting a thin disc means there's less compression, less pressure pushing down on that saw, and that's going to allow those chips to come out a little bit faster. Brandelos' stocks all right in the second place behind Mitch Hewitt. This now puts him in first place ahead of Ringgit, Comerick and Hewitt. As they go with the standing block chop. The standing block is the second axe event of the day where athletes slay at least 50% of the front side before traversing and turning to remove the back half, finalising their hit patterns with ripping overhead blocks. Coming on to the stage, we have Mark. Vicenzi. Paolo Vicenzi on the right hand side with the blue shirt and there we see Martin Komarek getting ready to start things off here. Both of these men with personal best in the 17 second range. We'll see if they can get somewhere near to that. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. All right, Paolo taking an aggressive stand at this, trying to get really fast blows in there. Martin Komarek starting off a little bit slower but now picking up the pace as he moves over to the other side ahead. Paolo Vicenzi, Paolo got his axe caught in the wood quickly as he tries to move over. And now he's back on it, Arcadia, I mean, excuse me, Martin Komarek. Oh my goodness, a great time for Martin Komarek here at 2165. Paolo Vicenzi needs to get one more blow to drop that block off the top of the 27. 67 after correction. At the top of the leaderboard, Brad DeLosa now has the pressure of maintaining that number one spot in the standing block. Yeah, standing block's the uh, last discipline in the first bracket, so it's important to get some good points there and try and stay ahead of the top guys. Mitchell Hewitt's got a bit of an odd relationship with the standing block chop. Sometimes he's hot, sometimes he's not. Let's see how he does today against Brad DeLosa. Both of these men have spent a lot of time down under. Brad DeLosa, obviously a resident there of Australia, they chop a much firmer block down in Australia, and that's what could give them an advantage going into this event. So we're hoping to uh, get some good times out of both of these guys. Probably not see any personal bests or records broken, but look for these two to jump up to the top of the leaderboard. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. You can see some great style from both of them. Brad DeLosa on the far side.
discipline. Should be a really fun heat. And of course, Jason Winyard, the current world record holder in this event at 12.33 seconds. These two titans of timber sports are going to look down to take that leading time down of uh, Mitch Hewitt's 18 seconds. If anybody can do it, it's that man on stand B, Jason Winyard, eight times world champion, achieving those victories on the back of his strength in chopping. Jason currently sitting sixth in the overall standings with 19 points, so depending on what he gets here, he could move up. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go! I think the wood is surprising everyone and it, it did surprise me too. So uh, some of the cuts are taking a few more hits and uh, the times are, are really much slower than last year. So just, just a matter of adjusting and trying to do the best you can with the wood that you got. 12 points in the standing block go to Mitch Hewitt while Brad Deloso finished in sixth place with seven points. Halfway through and Hewitt takes the top spot with Australian Brad Deloso in equal third and in striking distance of the top. Timer's ready! With a single bump, up next, can Brad Delosa get back to the top? Oh my goodness, it is a good time for Brad Delosa. We are in the Lily Hammer Norway for the Steel Kimber Sports Individual World Championships. At the halfway point, Australian Brad Delosa is currently in equal third place with Czech Martin Comrade as they head into Delosa's strongest discipline, a single buck. With its peg and rake system, the athlete pushes and pulls the single buck saw through a 46 centimetre pine log. The wedger oils the saw and drives a wedge between the cookie and trunk to help avoid friction hang-ups. All right, Matt Kogar. with plenty of power to boot. Let's see how they do in the single buck. Matt Kogar's got a good teacher in this one with Arden Kogar. He is uh, very strong in this discipline. Robert Ebner, we haven't seen him so much, uh, you know, during the, the qualification round. Looked okay, but I'm, I'm not really sure where he stands as far as this single buck is concerned. Matt Kogar's here at the World Championships, only a 13.9, but he's looking to improve on that. He wants to bring home the USA's first World Championship gold medal since 2005. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. All right, a bit of a tentative start by Robert Ebner, but he gets into the flow very quickly. Meanwhile, Matt Kogar on deck B is looking very strong. Robert Ebner and Matt Kogar. Oh, Matt Kogar gets a hang up, and Robert Ebner's got a little piece of chip left as he broke that cookie off. That's going to cost him big time, and the advantage definitely goes to Matt Kogar here with a 13.27. Martin Kumarek up against Brad Delosa. Now this is definitely Brad Delosa's discipline. He is so solid and he's got some fans in the audience there. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, of course, Brad Delosa coming off that uh, World Championship win at the Champions Trophy in Hamburg, Germany. His single bucking has actually come a really long way. He was unbeaten in the uh, Australian series for nearly two years. So uh, he's looking to bring that victory here to our stage today. Well, what I've seen of uh, Brad Delosa's uh, single buck while we've been here this weekend is it's incredibly strong. Uh, I would say almost as strong, if not stronger, than Jason Winyard, who we know is such a strong Sawyer when it comes to this particular discipline. Okay, gentlemen, timer's ready. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. Very sharp movements at the start, and then both of these guys get into this long cross through the middle of that block, get that cookie off, and oh my goodness, it is a good time for Brad Delosa at 11.83, 12.13 for Martin Comerick. So close, and both cookies looking good from my perspective here, so uh, I think
think that's going to be a good heat for both of these gentlemen with a nice time. Yeah, we see beautiful cuts put together by both of these seasoned veterans. Brad Delosa put together a good time, but uh, will it be good enough to stay ahead of Jason Winyard and Mitchell Hewitt? Good, yeah, really good. The single buck went, went as good as I could, really, so it was a PB for me, so I'm pretty happy with that, yeah. Great single buck then by Brad, just put him in first place with just Jason to go. But I think he's definitely got some good points here and he's going to be in the race, possibly in second place, heading into the, the springboard. All right, here they come, Mitchell Hewitt on the right-hand side of the stage there. Doing it for Canada. And of course, Jason Winyard, this is his discipline, bar none. Jason Winyard with an absolutely blistering time in single buck 940, I'm reading on the sheet here. Uh, I mean, if he can get even close to that, he'll be topping out on this one. And this is what we've seen from Jason Winyard over the past. You know, he, he doesn't start incredibly strong, for instance, in the underhand chop or the standing block chop, but then he comes on in the back end with just an amazing amount of power and grace to take on, you know, as we've seen, eight world championship titles. And the question is, can he do it again? Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go! Discipline, Jason Winyard takes the 16 points with Brad Delosa in close second ahead of Comerick and earns 14 points. The defending champion from New Zealand, Jason Winyard, is the overall leader to Australian Brad Delosa and Martin Comerick. With two events to go, the race is tight at the top. And Brad Delosa, a slight advantage. Can Delosa stay in contention or will Winyard take his ninth title? Two events away from crowning the best steel timber sports athlete. And Australian Brad Delosa is in close second behind eight-time world champion Jason Winwood as we enter the springboard. The springboard imitates an old lumberjack technique to overcome hard root wood. The athletes cut two pockets in a vertical log 2.7 metres high. With the help of the springboard, they climb to the top and cut through a 27 centimetre diameter log from both sides. All right, these two going head to head one more time. Matt Kogar from America going up against Robert Ebner from Germany. Should be interesting to see how these two fare. Yeah, as we look at some of the personal best from these two athletes, Robert Ebner over on Stan Day from Germany with a 48.58. But as we look at Matt Kogar, he comes in with a personal best of 38.96. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go! Looks like a good start for both gentlemen. Four pocket hit for Robert Ebner. Good board by the looks of it as well. Seems to be solid for Matt Kogar. Although it looks like it might be slipping a little bit for Matt Kogar. Each stroke he's taken, that board seems to be coming down a bit. But he is not focusing on that at all. Robert Ebner now moving up to the top. As he's got himself set with a really good looking board on that top block. And he starts working away. For Brad Delosa, having a good run in the springboard could win him the title and a bad run could put him out of contention. 
Springboard is probably the hardest event. There's is more chance of making a mistake in the springboard because you've got to put the pockets in and get to the top. So it's, a, yeah, once again, a crucial event for the points. All right, Brad DeLosa going up against Martin Comerick. These are two veterans of the sport, and we will see a great heat here. Both of these men with uh, personal bests in this event at 42 seconds. So uh, either one of those guys pulls out one of these cuts right now, it would be good enough to take the lead. All right, well, excited to see this matchup between Australia and the Czech Republic. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. All right, here we go. First, pockets being set by both of these guys. Wow, great. Look at that. Right on top of each other. Synchronized chopping, both with four hit holes. Martin Komarek just a little bit quicker in his movements. You see Brad Delosa going in for that top board, and that is a great board, and that's what you want when you get up on top there. Both guys into the block just about the same time when that block comes off. He was happy with that time. Not Brad's best springboard, but enough to get the points there and bring down that gap. So going into the hot saw, it's going to be anyone's game, uh, so it's game on for sure. Mitch Hewitt, the former world record holder in the springboard, going up against the big man from New Zealand, the reigning eight-time world champion. And as you saw that personal best time on there for Mitch Hewitt of 38 seconds, and that was the former world record, and uh, you know that he's going to be looking to take that back. So if Mitch gets the fast time today, he could potentially jump up to 49 points, which would definitely get him into the hot sauce final. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. All right, the key here, get that first pocket set and move your way up quickly. Jason Winyard and Hewitt both getting quickly up onto the board, but Mitchell Hewitt really fast into that first position and now super quick into the second position. There he is, second guess by Mitch Hewitt as he starts working from the very end of that screen. with Czech Komarek and Australian Brad Delosa in second and third. On the overall leaderboard, both Komarek and Delosa trail eight-time world champion Jason Wynyard by three points, with only the top six athletes qualifying and competing in the final hot saw event. And it comes down to the hot saw. Can Wynyard hold off Delosa and Komarek for his ninth world title? The still Timber Sports World Champion is yet to be decided here in Lilliana as we enter the final event. Eight-time World Champion Jason Williams from New Zealand holds a narrow lead over Czech Martin Comerick and Australian Brad Delosa, who are within striking distance to the top. So who will take home the still Timber Sports individual world title as they head into
into the hot seat. Athletes must cut three complete cookies in just 15 centimetres of the 46 centimetre diameter block. Jump the gun, cut over the line, or incomplete cookie will result in a DQ and end any chances of being crowned the champion. All right, in this discipline, you're only going to see one athlete on stage at any given time because these saws are so incredibly powerful and dangerous. And you can see there's glass protection and everything to make sure that the athletes and the judges stay safe. Starting with sixth place currently, which is Pierre Bouvaret of France, moving into Matt Coger, Mitch Hewitt, Brad DeLosa, Martin Komarek, and finishing with Jason Winyard. Here we go. Hands on the wood. Get set. looking saw compared to some of the other ones we've seen out there. This is actually a newer saw for Matt Coger. It is one of the most powerful saws in the world right now. If you want to ride the big bull, you got to hang on a little tighter. Hands on the wood. Get set. Next up, Mitch Hewitt from Canada. And as he said, it's a love-hate relationship. He would love to win in hot saw, but the hot saw hates him sometimes. Let's see how he does. Hands on the wood. Get set. Check that to make sure if everything is okay. Well, it's about everything being right. Martin Komarek getting ready for his hot saw here. He's got a chance to do something. Let's see how he fares. Hands on the wood. Get set. I've never seen that before, and there, Martin Komarek is running into the back. Looks like he's gonna try and fix that thing. The time is running, though. This is going to kill his chances of a podium. Oh my goodness, what a sad turn of events for Komarek as he tries to reset that chain. He will have a certain amount of time to get it back on the blade, start the saw and make his cuts, and he's getting a lot of support from the audience here. What a disastrous situation for Martin Komarek from the Czech Republic. For Brad DeLosa, the hot saw is make or break. Yeah, hot saw is one of them events where anything can happen. So you're not only relying on your capabilities, it's also the saw and the mechanical fail that you can have there. So hot saw is probably in this structure the most important event, but uh, yeah, also the most frustrating because things can happen that are out of your control. A couple of times that this has happened, so last year was a bit of a disaster. No fault of the saws last year, it was just operator error, and I um, yeah didn't perform as well as I would have liked to. So I think uh, this year all going well, it'll it'll come off nicely. Brad Delos coming out now, and as you say, out of your control is the key word here. The only thing you can do is prepare your saw properly beforehand, make sure that everything is running. You do get a test run of the saw, but that's all. Once the competition comes, anything can happen. Of course, Brad DeLosa, one of the uh, most consistent and uh, efficient hot sorts to ever uh, come out of Australia. He's going to look to put together a uh, three cuts on his way to a gold medal. We'll see what he Hands can do. on the wood. Get set. Huge mistake by Brad DeLosa, 9.43 is his time. And there you can see he cuts halfway through, just wanting to not get over the line, and then he's got to go back up and reset and do it again. 
when I went for the third cookie, I went a little bit thin and it, it blew out at the top. I was lucky that there was enough wood to go back between the line to, to get a full cookie. So to make a mess of the hot soil like I did then was, yeah, very disappointing. I haven't sort of put a good run together at the World Championships at all. So um, sooner or later, if I get another chance, I'd like to you know put a good hot soil run together. So back in Australia, it's been running really well. And uh, that's sort of what got me here, you know, at the end of the day. So it's a disappointing way to finish with the hot soil. So Brad Delosa currently leading in the standings after the hot saw, but he knows he's had a bad cookie in there, and he's got his pins and needles going as Jason Winyard comes out. All Jason Winyard needs to do is get three good, clean cookies in a fairly quick time, and he can take it again. If he makes a mistake, it's Brad Delosa's World Championship title. Let's see. Hands on the wood. Get set. With a time of 7.98, is that going to be enough? That was a spin disc. And they're going to look at that last disc to see if it is, in fact, complete. Now, as you saw it break when it hit the stage, that does not mean there's a disqualification. If they have to go back and look at the video, they will. As long as it was a complete disc when he finished the cut, that's all he needs. But you see a small fragment is broken off there. Waiting for the official call by the judges. Okay, nice work. The cut is good. Unbelievable effort by Winyard. That means Jason Winyard from New Zealand wins his ninth world championship title. Then when I looked up and I saw almost eight seconds, um, I was thinking, uh, maybe this is not so good. Yeah, look, I'm pretty happy to get a silver medal, you know. It's uh, disappointing not to win, but uh, there can only be one winner, and Jason was too good for me today, you know. Brad Delosa, a true sportsman, congratulating the winner, Jason Williams. Canada's Mitch Hewitt takes the bronze. Uh, this is my fifth crack at it, so uh, to get up there was a good feeling. That's it for this year's series. Make sure you follow Still Timber Sports Australia on social media for more Still Timber Sports action.